Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the infinitely divine cyber essence that guides all of our lives. And it is time for episode 5 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So we're going to pick up pretty much where we left off. Uh, oh hey, look. I love it when you find a slight misalignment. Um, anyway. So, last episode we fell the fuck down from there and found an astonishing discovery that feels like it should blow this whole case wide open. I also had the uncomfortable realisation that I am not on some kind of a delightful holiday to Miami's dream of itself. So, let's try and get back to uh, where we were previously by climbing back up. We've got several characters that we haven't yet had the chance to talk to, so we'll probably go interview the other witnesses before we do anything else. But uh, I'm starting to suspect at this point that um, there really is... I feel like there's four different plots going on and all of the cover-ups for each of the different plots is interfering with each other. You know, there's a lot of things that blow each other wide open but don't actually <laughs> add up when all taken in aggregate. So hopefully some of that will will um, be sorted out later. So we'll come talk to Yuri Knight in a minute and um, I've got some stuff to say. But first, let's go activate this dead nebula. Uh, I haven't pointed this out before, but Dead Nebula's logo is incredibly horny. Um, this whole game feels like it is incredibly horny without being sexual, which is a remarkably tight line to walk. Relic obtained. Indefinable Spectrum, a popular chilled canned coffee. A blend of different flavours made to satisfy any coffee lover. So, yeah. Um, this, this is kind of most true in some of the character art, I think, because... Um, when I look at Yuri Knight, I think this character was designed by someone who finds men's bodies sexy. This is this is character art that is intentionally very horny, and yet it is not quite sexual. Yuri Knight. Secretary to the Architect. You're the famous investigation freak. I don't believe we've ever met before. Yuri Knight, Secretary to the Architect and the Fairy Woman's Handler. Born in the Marble Chambers on Island Sequence 15 under the sign of Dyer Rose. Yuri is new to the Syndicate and has quickly risen through the ranks. I can't believe in our darkest hour the judge called on you. I understand your secretary to architect Carmelina and Lydia's handler during the ferrywoman duties. Did you manage to deduce that? I do. I wonder how much difference these options actually make. I've mostly been picking based on instinct of however I think um, Lady Love Dies should be reacting in that in that particular moment, but. Um, I don't really think about it too much, and maybe I should. At the very least, perhaps I should read out both options. But hey, I'm five episodes into this. It's a bit late to start changing my mind about how I'm doing things. I'm so glad Judge brought me back. Be a good freak, get Henry prosecuted, and then you can disappear back up into exile. You're convinced it was Henry. Obviously, I can only aspire to your level, but I think it's pretty clear. Let's get to business. What do you want, freak? No mention of grieving for our loss? Grieving is a sign of weakness. I said, let's get to business. Stop dragging this out. Okay, interesting. Way less conversation with this guy. Um, let's jump straight to the case files. I want to get his alibi. Where were you last night? I was directing the fairy woman all night. From where? Here in the celebratory gardens. You often work in the gardens? My work last night didn't require a desk, and the gardens are beautiful when an island is ending. Any proof? No, freak. The gardens aren't covered by logs, unlike the HQ. Why can I demand his phone? Am I allowed to demand anyone's phone? Because I haven't had that option with the other people I've talked to yet. Or is there a piece of evidence that's giving me that, that right? Give me your phone, Yuri. What? I need to verify your location last night. You would have been making calls with it if you were directing Lydia. I'm under no obligation to give you my phone. I have important work to do with it. God damn, that is a frowny face. Hell yeah. Not until I've finished my important work, you don't. I have jurisdiction here. I am the investigator Judge called on. You are obliged to assist my investigation or I will haul you in front of Judge for obstruction. If you don't give me your phone, I will also assume that you have something to hide. Oh, I don't like that. Plenty of people. Actually, there is probably some stuff to talk about. Uh, with regards to copaganda and and the rights of investigators. I feel like there's 
you can do a detective story without it being propaganda very easily because you know the private investigator has a kind of an archetypical role that is detached from that of the police which i will talk about later with uh, slightly more crystalline thoughts but let's continue with this conversation first fine whatever that wasn't so hard was it just do what you need to do and bring it back I just need to use the comms tower to verify the location of any calls made from this phone, and then you can have it back after the trial. Okay. So we've got his testimony and his phone, which should prove. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if everyone's testimony is broken, and half of the reasons why their testimonies break is because of, um, like, just random coincidence. Let's see. Um, let's see what his suspicions are. Do you want to drop anyone in it? Dish the dirt on someone? What? Who's got a motive to kill the council? The killer is in a cell waiting to be executed. Well, let's say he isn't the killer. He is. It's a thought experiment, Yuri. Play along. If Henry didn't kill the council, who else had a motive? Fine, I'll play along. You should investigate Crimson. You gave that name up pretty easily. I've had my suspicions for a while. Why? Something sits wrong with her. Why did she get blessed? What would stop her wanting more power now that she is blessed? She's too smug. That seems tenuous. Well, you're the investigation freak. Investigate. I'm starting to think Lady Love Dies might just be an autistic person with a special interest in investigation. <laughs> Considering all of the syndicates seem to have their monomaniacal spheres of influence. You know, they're all archetypical roles. The architect, the uh, industrialist and so on. Do you believe Henry did this? What an insufferable question. Of course he did it. The Grand Marshal has him in custody. No suspicions on anyone else? The islands are full of schemers, you know that. Interesting. So it looks like I can ask him about a shit ton of other... things. It seems like I should probably rinse everyone for all the information they have whenever I meet them so that I don't have to circle back around again, but it does seem like that would take a while. What do you know about Kahax's disappearance? He hasn't been seen for a few days, probably sleeping off a hangover. He was one of your old drinking crew, wasn't he? Isn't a missing syndicate member something of a concern for one of the people responsible for getting the syndicate off the island? I can only work with what I have. If he doesn't want to be picked up by the ferryman, I can't help that. He's his own man. No concern or empathy? What do you want from me? I can't care about everybody. It's exhausting. Tell me about Crimson. The traitorous idol. Traitorous? She peddles her secrets and destabilizes the syndicate. Hmm. I do kind of want to know about more about secrets with sarcasm. I'm not sure how she'll, what she'll say there, but um, I'm gonna go with that one because I kind of want to know more about the secrets that people might be hiding. Obviously, he's worried, or he wouldn't have uh, suggested her name in the first place. People shouldn't have so many secrets. Don't excuse her just because she's your friend. Don't look surprised, I've done my research. I know you and her go way back. The drinking gang, bunch of drunks and freaks. Has she got a motive for killing the council? She has her own secrets. I'm sure she isn't happy about people knowing. She wants to play soldiers again. She won't accept her new role or wants to run around with a sword and a gun fighting demons. If the next island is perfect, there won't be any more demonic invasions. I think she's trying to destabilize the island so she can have another go at playing soldier. Interesting. Totally baseless. <laughs> uh, in fact, I can I can just call this totally baseless, but I kind of want to see what his what he's what his motivation is. You sure this isn't just about her blessing? What about it? You're jealous. Your deductive skills have let you down, freak. I don't think they have. Interesting. So I guess Crimson Acid is trading secrets in addition to trading the, industri the industrial things that come out of the Deep Factory, which is an incredibly sinister named place that we'll be hopefully exploring later on. What do you know about the second Holy Seal? We don't know about the seals, Freak, that's the point. Well, Did you see the Architect last night? I saw the Architect before I started my duties with the Fairy Woman. You should ask her about the time of the murder, though. I was here. Do you know anything about the murder of the Marshal Guards outside of the council building? I don't know anything, Investigator. I wasn't there. Well, that's me told, I guess. 
what is going to happen if I try and hang out with- I haven't hung out with anyone yet. I assume that it's more like backstory and maybe some like dating sim type mechanics rather than being relevant to the investigation, but I don't know how separate they are. After all, people often let things slip in casual conversation. Or well, the go going right into casual conversation after just having grilled this guy for everything he's worth is kind of not perfect investigatorial technique. You weren't part of the syndicate before I was exiled. Is that a statement or a question? A question. Then phrase it like a question. You're serious? Is that a statement or a question? What is your history with the Syndicate? I was born to low-ranking Syndicate members, barely footnotes in our history. They say children naturally rebel against their parents, and I am evidence. They were content to wallow in obscurity, and now I am secretary to the architect. How did- No, thank you. Sorry? I'm not interested in talking with you about myself anymore. Goodbye, freak. Goodbye, Yuri. Okay. I was not mistaken. My relationship has increased. May you see through a million eyes, and may you reach the moon. Interesting. Okay. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I interact that way. Oh, wow, we were talking for ages. It's nighttime. Uh, although the day-night cycle is very quick in this in this mysterious alternate realm. I don't necessarily know if I were de designing the perfect society outside of time and space that I would um, have the day-night cycle be quite so fast, but at least it does mean we get some really gorgeous views. There's, um, there's been a huge amount of care taken in this game to make sure that you get good sight lines. This is a, um, this is a, a very important feature of, of any kind of environmental design in games and in art generally. It all comes down to composition. So when you're designing a 3D space, it's very important to think about sight lines because that's the basis on which composition can be achieved in a 3D medium. Um, so while not everything is perfect, I am constantly impressed by how dripping with just kind of atmosphere this place is. I want to genuinely actually just spend a few days walking around and seeing what's up. Anyway, hi Shinji. Is this the end of the syndicate? Thinking out loud, love dies? How the hell should I know? They're your people. Now piss off and investigate. Wow, okay, that's me told, again. Uh, so, this is, uh, oh hang on, isn't this... Yeah, this is uh, this is where we were previously. I've already, I think I've already used this dead nebula machine even. No, I have. Have I? Why not? Let's find out. Yeah, I've already used this one. So this is where we came from two-ish episodes ago and met a ghost. And then I think last episode we talked to the ghost here. So um, yeah, the environmental design is also pretty impressive with how tightly coiled it is. This place feels enormous, but you constantly find yourself returning on the same places. It's uh, very much the dark souls of a, of a visual novel in that respect. Anyway, so, um, there's a save point here, but it's one I've actually already activated. And now that I think about it, isn't there a save point like... Yeah, there's one literally up this staircase. Why are these two save points so close together? They're about 12 feet apart. Yeah, I thought I saw one. That's ridiculous. Who's been lobbying the transit authority? Is this where the rich people live? Where's my map? Syndicate apartments. Oh, hell yeah, it is where the rich people live, of course. <laughs> of course they've got much better access to, um, to, to travel methods. Let's see what we get this time. Oh, wait, shit. And in this moment, I realised it's important to actually read what it says on the screen. I didn't realise I'd already unlocked this one, but of course I did when we went up this path previously. Hey, LD. How's the investigation going? It's progressing. Going through my suspect list. Am I on it? I guess I must be, right? We're all guilty until proven innocent when something like this happens, right? What about getting people to the next island? Anything strange? I'm still in charge of getting this into off this island and onto the next. Some of us got moved, but the rest are stuck here until you crack this thing. I've done it for 23 islands without a problem. Once the council began meditating, I started moving us. Get a call, do a pickup, go through the gates, onto the next island, repeat. The island feels bad, LD. So, where can I take you? Well, I mean, I guess I've spent my money now anyway. There's two here. Does that mean there's two points that I can move to in this gardens? Anyway, uh, let's see. The council building, the syndicate HQ, the courthouse. I suppose I could go to the courthouse and talk to judge. I'm not sure that would be helpful. 
the citizen apartment blocks or all the way back to the paradise gates which is where Lydia I think no she's hanging out on the beach let's see I wonder if I can just back out I'll take you back you'll get your blood crystal refunded oh thank goodness for that <laughs> I need to save the damn things up since I can um, go get an upgrade if I can find that foot spa again which is around here somewhere actually passing by this uh, nightmare computer again I find myself uh, bringing to mind something I've been meaning to talk about, which is that um, there's something curious about the way this game uses metagaming. So metagame in video games usually refers to a multiplayer layer, the kind of um, way that different tactics rise to prominence and come to dominate a multiplayer scene of a, of a game. But in tabletop role-playing, metagaming means acting based on your understanding that it is a game and the way the system works, essentially using knowledge external to that of the character you're playing in the game to interact with the game. Uh, it's generally frowned upon, you know, if you can say, um, well, I know I should do this because I know that there is a really high likelihood there's going to be a monster in the next room based on the way my GM likes to play, that's usually kind of a dick move. You're supposed to be acting as your character. However, players metagame in video games almost constantly. I certainly find myself always subject to it without even realising. And so when I interacted with that computer, I had no reason to think that computer was going to be relevant to anything. But the player's instinct is, I'm going to hoover this up, I'm going to find every single piece of information, I'm going to completely rinse this game for its content. Therefore, I interact with everything. Because it wouldn't be here if it didn't have a purpose, because I know that this is a, you know, a place created um, for the benefit of me, the player. So this interacts really interestingly with the idea of the archetypal figure of the detective, because the detective, as a kind of a cultural trope, is the person who sees slightly deeper. You know, most people look at something and they see the surface, and the detective is able to see the hidden meaning and then weave those hidden meanings together. This is true of whether they're a private detective or otherwise, which is why the uh, detective is kind of an interesting figure. But this simultaneously undermines and reinforces uh, itself when you consider the metagaming behavior of the player, because, um, well, the detective is the person who has no reason to suspect there's anything sinister in that dustbin, but on a hunch, they just open it up and, hey, what do you know? They found the severed hand of the suspect or whatever. Um, and I think that that is kind of clever because in a detective game, everything we investigate is likely to be relevant to the investigation at some point. But because we were players, we were going to be doing that anyway. So there's, there's just this clever way to blend the natural instinct of a player of games with the natural instinct of the detective to look a little deeper. Anyway, time to finally get an upgrade. Let's see what we get. My feet feel lighter. It must be the mountain water. Hey, I do feel lighter on my feet. That's strange. Feels like I could double jump, hop right over these walls. Double jump unlocked. These islands are weird. I guess she has been off the islands for a while. Maybe they didn't used to have platforming mechanics. Imagine if you visit, revisited your t hometown after a few uh, a few years of being away, and um, the first thing someone said was like, "Oh, hey, did you know we unlocked double jump? Yeah, give it a try. Why don't you try air dashing?" Anyway, uh, actually, I'm gonna take a quick look around the back of here because I noticed there was a nightmare computer. So, I almost feel like I shouldn't metagame quite so much but you know if I found this it seems like it might be relevant to something you know like there's probably a reason why I would be investigating in this area later so I might as well do it now or not since I don't have the requisite upgrades but hopefully I will find those at some point let's have a look see what's up here and uh oh look at that it's another one of these mysterious uh crests so I still don't know what's going to happen if I find all of those crests. I don't know what's going to happen if I find all of anything. Well, oh, this is a pretty nice vantage point, though. I wonder who I should go talk to next. Let's see. We've tried to get into the justice. We've tried to get into the marshal building. We've talked to the judge. So there's um, I think that's Sam Daybreak over there, and there's obviously Lydia Daybreak. 
the witness of the end, Grand Marshal Akiko 14 and Henry Division, who is in her custody, I guess, since they're together. Um, as the crime scene, we've been there. Ah, Dr. Doom Jazz. And we, it looks like we can go back to Carmelina because we now have some kind of additional evidence to confront her with. Um, I need to go to the comms tower, though. What is it? What's the comms tower? Is that any of the towers yeah. that um, grant me new <sighs> things to listen to? It doesn't look like it. If I head over this way... Let's see, that's the factory... No, that's the power generator over there, I think. So, yeah, um, hmm. I think I'll go head to the person we'll talk to next and then call it a day for today, I think. Oh, hey, can I double... Can I jump high enough to get up here now? No. It looks like it's another one of the mysterious crests. I wonder if that's actually one of the seals that um, keep the place shut. So, in addition to the double jump, there's an air dash and then two other upgrades that I don't know. What, I don't actually know what they are yet. Where's, where's Doom Jazz? Oh, he's down there. How do I get down there? I think there's an elevator around that goes down to the like under layer of this semi-brutalist edifice. What do you call that? I wonder if the crests are all in this area. Lost pain. He escaped to the moon's dark side during the Great Betrayal. He was trying to drain the moon's power to complete his resurrection. We need to deal with him before that happens. I mean, I could just jump straight down onto the beach. Is that... Oh, okay. I guess that's his yacht. I could take a shortcut, but taking shortcuts by just jumping off shit feels like metagaming to me. I feel like I should find the proper way down. And of course, you know, steal every single dollar that I find lying around. Just, you know, hoovering up everything that I can find and secreting them away in case they come in handy later. All right, that's the Marshall building. There didn't seem to be a way down from over here, so maybe I'm supposed to go down and around from over this way. Oh, hell yeah. Double jumping's actually pretty cool, who knew? Anyway, we have been over this way because there's Yuri. Bye, Yuri. Who clearly hates me, but I apparently have improved my relationship with him very slightly. Remember, if you meet someone in real life and they can't stand your guts, that means they secretly like you and you should spend more time around them. Oh no, look, see that? That must be the elevator there. I can't get across the water here. So I'm just going to cut right here. So this is an elevator, but that elevator goes up. We'll check out what's up there a bit later on, assuming that I can, in fact, get access to that. But we want to talk to Doom Jazz now because, well, we've got a few questions for him based on things other people have said. So I have, in fact, found right back <laughs> where I started looking for the elevator from. I just didn't look quite far enough. So over here, hidden behind these voluminous shrubberies, we can find the elevator. It's a neat little detail that you can see Lady Love Dies' is love... Uh, love vial let's not say that lady love dies is blood vial getting plugged in so um in order to operate these machines we can reasonably trust that these people will have had to to some extent actually use their blood vials which is how they are tracked across the island which is something else that i want to kind of examine a bit later on um you know whose job is it to make sure that the blood vial system is is you know not hackable Bear the Sheba, the most wonderful dog. Why wouldn't you use this skin? Do you hate my dog? I'll kill you, no joke. Okay, well I guess we need to find out who has a pet Sheba Inu then. So, uh, yeah. God, it's gorgeous down here. Something about living in Scotland really makes you idolise places like, uh, I don't know, Miami or coastal Japan or like these lovely... These lovely big concrete places with these beautiful cliffs and men who just will not wear shirts. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's going to be all from me for today. Join me next episode and we'll uh, get the lowdown on what uh, Dr. Doom Jazz's vibes are. This is, this is one of the less pleasant views, I would say. You've got industry and uh, cosmic horror dueling for position. I'm surprised they don't make the citizens live down here where it's miserable. Although there is very a very clear stratification of society. Which actually reminds me, I was meaning to have a quick look. There was an implication that the syndicate is more than just these. These are just the top members of the syndicate. 
because uh, Yuri Knight mentioned that his parents were syndicate members, but not but that they were not notable. So presumably the the pool of syndicate is more than just these like like fifteen ish people. Uh, anyway, that actually is going to be all from me for today. As we watch the orange smog roll in and prepare to get like every kind of lung cancer simultaneously, because that's what it's like in the nineteen eighties. So that's going to be all from me. Thanks for watching. Please stop staring at me. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.